We started back in 2010, a pre-ODI era, as we can make coin in this summit, where we, as public spending on net, we start to index uh, millions of decision, payment decisions in Greek portal and around the world. Then, City of Athens came with open data for real-time budget execution in detail, in top detail. And then, now, for instance, there is a new project, Open Budgets, funded from the European Union, or the International Budget and Transparency, come in here, or USA Spending, or Open Spending, Open TED, or also Open Corporates, as you, as you shared many times today and other days. Of course, Open Contracting Partnership, working on data around the world, or the Extractives Industry, or the Aid, or the aid Transparency, also OGP, GIFT, and a new project we've got about open data in uh, journalism about the economy. So this is just an indication of the spectrum of economic open data. But can we provide answers? Are we ready to give answers to new and important questions? Like, for instance, is public procurement expensive? Are retail price high? Why? Contractors, who are the contractors of public project globally? Is public budgeting effective? Is it working for us? And I think most importantly, the new strategy we're coining in EU can be accelerated through economic open data. I think we cannot yet give consistent and compact answers on that. Economic data still are unstructured, are unexpected, disaggregated. That's a good thing for econometricians and statisticians. You can see in depth what is thing happening, not related to policy goals. We discuss so often about evidence-based policy. It's not here yet in massive scale, but we think they're of great potential. So our work the last five years can be depicted in one picture. We are trying to create a model that can work as a common language in economic open data. So what? let's start with the actors, government, also suppliers or producers and auditors who are auditing these two main players in our society, and the usual procurement process. Nothing new, I just only put one new thing. Budget, procurement, and spending, that's normal, but pay attention to this. Also, we've got, this they wants to leave, I don't know why, maybe it's too expensive to do that. Uh, subsidies and aid are public money given to companies and organizations, but without a direct reward to the state, but still they're public money. And now I would like to introduce you a new idea. The idea is that we've got also not only the G2B market or the public procurement or whatever you can say, but also we've got the real market, the market with producers, consumers, prices, etc. And how we can involve it and how we can exploit Three dimensions for the market are really important in the open data era. Price, quantity, and quality. These are connecting to the market. Also, let me uh, just repeat what has been discussed, especially from Thomson Reuters' presentation about PermID. We need to have stable foundations around this data. And these are standards and repositories. Economic business information, product information, and economic information are at least the, the three minimum prerequisites for make things, things happen. Also, not to forget that this budget has some input. The first is taxes, other revenues, as it was be presented, extractives or others. So, what we try to do 
as you seen before, these labels of nice initiatives, now I have put just some names and links on top of them. And precisely, we're interested in two things. First, not all the markets are from the, we have to choose. We choose food and agriculture, we choose finance, we choose energy and tourism. Tourism, you know, we're from Greece, from Italy, so we'd like to exploit this data. And also, what is the future agenda? I hope after two or three years, we're going to talk about open data on taxes, because now we've got very poor data on taxes, is corporate tax transparency. But I think that is more as a dream, not a reality. Oh, that's a mistake? No, it's not a mistake. It's a tomato. Also, I uh, talked about food and agriculture. And I'll let a tomato speak the data story for me today. And if I was in Moz Fest, maybe I, I can hand, have a prop as a tomato here and try to do some things. But I don't want to uh, be so risky. So I'll try to uh, be in a tomato's life from the lab up to the market and then whenever go where. Prices. Well, we've got in Greece some prices about, first of all, the wholesale. And not only prices, we've got also quantities. So this is uh, data year to date from Central Market of Saloniki. As you know, uh, uh, wholesale markets are like uh, auction markets. In the morning, you bring your thing uh, and you auction price in different qualities. This is average quality. So that's a market normalized to euro per kilo. And now it comes the fresh from retail stores. This is price collection every week around more than 2,000 stores all over Greece. And the price is 144 and also you can see that there's a big price dispersion. And now let's go, as we call in, in economics, all the substitutes, all the products that can be consumed uh, as tomatoes are, tomatoes in can or chopped or other. We've got many of them, more than 100, and you can see that the price is close. And uh, if it is a label, it's more de de deviates more in time or if it's a free other label, it's not. And now, this is, the, for me, the holy grail. We have calculated a procurement price. So what we're doing, we're doing from a market to the procurement. For year to date, for all the data that they're well put it in the portal, this is my disclaimer, not all of them, could be good, it's 1.43. Not bad, we're close to the retail. But let's see some, let's say, prices that are of interest. That's why we've got open data. We can see in detail who is doing what. These two cities are not doing very well. And the prices comparison is with retail prices close to their city. But city of New Ionia, many ancient names. I just put them on purpose, as you may know. So you, you remember that this is a presentation about Greece. So you can have this detail in this market. And this is maybe a tomato story, but can you see about the gas and the oil story? It's about billions every year. And now the third new part, so we've got price and quantity, at least in wholesale. In retail, I don't think we're going to find it the next five years, but We've got a list two. And what we're missing? Quality. So approximation for quality for food could be to taste it, but also it can be tasted in the borders from some people that are more, let's say, uh, are better scientists than me in this area. So we've got border controls about food quality. And as you can see from the official alert system, we've got to more than 200 incidents, and 29 are from Greece. And now let's go to a detailed incident of food alerts. We found that back in 2011, some dried tomatoes from Turkey, they've got some sulfate. I don't know which sulfate, but it doesn't uh, look so good to me. And if I want to see how bad it is, I've got another example where we enrich the data. 
we enrich the data with exactly which are the limits, which are the limits of the pesticide from another source of open data portal. So for every pesticide, we can have the limit. So you know how you're going to die. So real-time budget ratios. What uh, is the next part? What we're doing? We're not waiting the end of the year and the charter accountants from London to come to Greece or to Troika every month. We're calculating for the biggest two cities every day. So we know financial ratios every day. Also, as I told you before, subsidies, it's another way of public money. So for companies that they're in the Greek stock market, we calculated both and the public procurement and the subsidies the last three years. So you can find all this information, and I'll post uh, the related Spark queries to do your own uh, tests. You can find search or uh, repository and Sparkland Point, the last two are still in Greek, but we're working on to be in English because this project is funded from the Greek Ministry of Education, but we're, uh, we're working on having all this translated and transferred actually to English. So let me now starting to wrapping up these stories. So linked open economy, it sounds to you, I think, familiar, but it's the first time we discuss about that. And actually, it's a way to orchestrate this growing number of economic open data to a nice music that can give us some answers. And this can fit very well and could be one of the cornerstones of our strategy. Because if you want to achieve a digital single market, we need also, as it was said in the morning by Nigel and Gavin, also to open data and to the rest of the spectrum. So the strategy part is in the European agenda. In few words, if I want to share the term like Tim uses philosophical engineering or engineering ethics, what we need now, we need from public to give us data about taxes, about resources, about procurement, about audits. And not only negative audits, but also positive audits. That's equally very important to be symmetric in open data. Private, privacy, information accountability, all the, the, all the things they're doing about shared and closed data, we would like to know its uses. And the communities to provide standards and technologies. Don't forget, we are here, from most of us from different communities, but from my community, which is the web and web science community, we should know that what the web really changes is the way, a new way to ask and answer existing basic or everyday questions. That's what it brings. And Generation Open, as my Kenji work said, or something different, but I think it fits. It's not only to consume Web 1, to produce Web 2 information. It's about to collectively transform the abstractions of this information. And linked open economy could be an abstraction. So my message behind all the other, besides all the other messages, is that Generation Open is about changing things together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michalis, for a great talk, um, entertaining and, and very informative as well. I think we have time for, for one question from, from the audience. I think there are people at the back and here at the front itching to ask questions. Please pass the mic down. Hi, Michalis. Uh, I had the chance to talk yesterday with a colleague from the Odine uh, program that works in the customs data from France and the UK. And the examples that he described uh, seem to give a great source of data that uh, have 
actual economic impact. Uh, and I was surprised to see that only France and the UK expose this kind of data. Uh, how we could, let's say, br bring this out and take it uh, in a European level? Because there are uh, industries like uh, some commodities that do not operate in exchanges, and this kind of data give real info about these markets, which is uh, invisible otherwise. Thank you very much for the question. I had the luck two months before to host in an event of international budget transparency in Athens, Professor Passas from Northeastern University, who is working with the United States government about uh, all the um, smuggling and all the illegal action th through borders, through American borders. They are estimating the economic loss in one trillion dollars until today. And they're doing some research on that. They have started to release aggregates in the United States and working with them. And in Greece, we have already, let's say, formed the first letter to the government. And we will address during 2016 about start releasing all the results of controls and aggregates of all the inter-border exchange. That's our first goal. If we can have this data, it's going to be very useful to work in a, in a very uh, promising area. And also, aside that, I forgot to tell on audits. Audits from uh, about food, al food alerts and inter border, just it's one part of food alerts. The biggest part resides in the national food safety organizations. And now I we'll start working with Greek to release not PDFs reports, but real data and to work on, on standards in order to exploit them in an automatic way. So it's very important. And inside the country and in the border economic trade to have at least some aggregates in order to detect signals. For instance, UK that has been recognized as the, top, as the top producer of diamonds, but it's not because they are doing triangular um, uh, transactions. Okay, so there's a big, uh, a big potential of that. Thank you very much for the question. Let's thank Michalis one more time. Thank you very much.